Let's look at molecular compounds. We also call them covalent compounds. Remember, they're made of nonmetals only. There are no ions present with these. They don't have charges. Um, do not look up the charges. It won't make sense most of the time if you do. In these, the formula tells you what is in one group. So the name has to tell you um, what is in one group. You can't figure it out any other way. In fact, um, if I just told you the elements, you couldn't figure out the formula because a lot of times there's more than one compound that is possible, like carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So the name has to specify what's in one group. So when we name them, the name specifies how many by using these prefixes. Um, and then the second one, we will end with "-ide". So for this one, phosphorus trichloride. Notice we don't say like mono in the front for one phosphorus, but we do say the tri for the three. Um, mono is not used anymore. It used to be. Um, and we do still use it for carbon monoxide because it was um, named by that old system and everybody just knew it as that. It's a common one. Let me show you one more thing about these. Let's look at this molecule. So if I wanted to name this, it would be dinitrogen. Tetra for four hydride. And its formula would be this. Notice that you might look at this and think that the formula should be reduced, but it's not. Do not reduce one of these because the formula tells you what is in one group.